Thank you very much, Councillor Vershaw, and uh, good morning and welcome, everybody. Welcome to Adelaide Town Hall. In its 150th year, so this building is celebrating a birthday this year, and uh, talking about time, I don't know if you're feeling the same as me, but I don't know where this year is going. It seems to be racing along at a rapid rate of knots. I also acknowledge that we meet on Ghana land and we pay respect to both elders past and present, and I acknowledge the Minister, Honourable Stephen Mulligan, MP, State Minister for Transport and Infrastructure. Minister, thank you very much for joining us today. We very much appreciate it. Also I acknowledge uh, the member for Adelaide, Rachel Sanderson, MP, and aforementioned, of course, by Councillor Vershaw, the many acknowledgements. But I have many fellow mayors here uh, from across metropolitan Adelaide, and thank you very much, mayors. I appreciate you being here. This is an important conversation. And councillors from many local governments, uh, councillors, of course, from the Adelaide City Council included. Thank you, fellow councillors, uh, and being here. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are CEOs from local government here too. We have interstate guests. So, uh, and of course, the media. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, greatly appreciate you being here. Now, this is interesting. Um, this could well be a little bit of a um, back to the future moment. I just wonder, in ages gone past, whether we've had a similar debate, possibly in this very same room at Adelaide Town Hall, in, in a year I could never nominate. But I just wonder whether we've had a group of learned people like yourselves in here in Adelaide Town Hall many, many moons ago having a similar conversation about a similar opportunity. Who knows? Time will tell. But I'm um, very proud to call this summit and uh, by the response, uh, by your very kind response and you giving up your valuable time to join us here today, I think it's fairly indicative of the importance that each of you place on this opportunity for your local government areas and the Minister places this on for Metropolitan Adelaide, and we place this on for our entire community, City of Adelaide included. So thank you very, very much. We know that Adelaide is one of the most livable cities in the world. We're ranked currently at number five, and we believe, together, uh, we need to be fairly clever, fairly strategic, uh, and fairly methodical in terms of how we continue to lift ourselves up that leaderboard. And indeed, Adelaide City Council by 2020 has a goal to become the third most livable city in the world. And maybe this conversation today uh, has something to do with us climbing up that leaderboard. The, um, we've also seen through Metropolitan Adelaide and the City of Adelaide some fairly profound change over recent years. And a lot of that change, of course, has enabled growth. And growth is important for all of us. We've got a transforming economy, we've got a transforming city. We've got a great deal of infrastructure investment into the city of Adelaide and we've got more people living in the city of Adelaide. In fact, we have more people living in the city of Adelaide every year than what we've had for decades. So the timeliness of this discussion, and of course that is paralleled in many suburbs uh, throughout metropolitan Adelaide, but the timeliness of this discussion in terms of how we move people in and around our city is now extraordinarily important. And none more important, of course, ladies and gentlemen, than within a federal government election year. So thank you for our federal representatives for joining us here today. We greatly appreciate your presence also. The, uh, I also acknowledge my team from Adelaide City Council, led by our CEO, Mark Goldstone, who's done a great deal of work and has a great deal of passion uh, for what this opportunity looks like for the city, because it helps achieve many goals not just the efficient and effective movement of people throughout our city, but also, of course, we have a goal to become the world's first carbon neutral city by 2025, and we think transport's got a lot to do with that. So, a lot of food for thought today. Today is about learning. It's about learning from cities that have done this. It's about learning from case studies in terms of the social, economic, and transport benefits and environmental benefits of those cities that have adopted models like the one we're potentially contemplating and looking at what the benefits are for our residents, uh, for businesses, for tourists, uh, for investment attraction, for property, for a wide range. And that's what we're here to do today, ladies and gentlemen, is just to begin to articulate those benefits. And this is the first time I understand that we have done that together, in one place, in one room, unless of course we did do it uh, 80 years ago, or whatever that may have been, when we were first contemplating the opportunity for Adelaide. So, thank you very much. It's also about building um, first-class infrastructure for the long term, about building infrastructure which serves our city today, tomorrow, 10 years' time, and in 30 years' time, 
uh, so that we can achieve our goals together, which is important. So today we'd like to see tangible momentum. We would like to see, at least at the end of today, uh, fellow mayors, some consensus about what your thoughts are with regards to light rail through your cities, whether you think it's a good idea, uh, what the benefits may look like for your cities, what it might look like for your main streets, what it might look like for your vacancy rates, what it might look like for the, 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 the value of your house prices, prices. I don't know. We're here to learn. So there may be many benefits that we might be able to share today. So we know that we've got a Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, has an interest in the effectiveness of public transport. And uh, let's hope that discussions like this can open the door towards some federal assistance. We also know that Anthony Albanese, the Federal Shadow Transport and Infrastructure Minister, only very recently stepped up and said that should the opposition be elected, they would have a good square look at uh, delivering the project to ext extend the tram network throughout metropolitan Adelaide. So we welcome both sides of the political divide because we think this has got bipartisan benefit for all of our communities. So we encourage everyone to look at this with great seriousness. It is a wonderful opportunity for everybody. We also know there was the Infrastructure Australia report earlier this year which highlighted this as a priority project for the City of Adelaide and for other cities. And in 2015, I had the great honour of chairing the Council of the Capital City of Lord Mayors, where I discussed this subject with every Lord Mayor in the nation, and they all rank it with very high priority. Melbourne, of course, knows the benefits intimately. So I've had many discussions with Lord Mayor Robert Doyle from the City of Melbourne. So we're here to learn from those who have got first-hand experience. I encourage everyone to approach this with a very open mind, because the benefits might look different for each of you. And that is fine, whether they are economic, whether they are social, whether they are transport, and whether they're environmental. Let's look at this with a very, very open mind. It could be a great opportunity to uh, enable uh, Adelaide and metropolitan Adelaide to grow, which is really, I think, the overarching goal, is uh, growth, inclusion, and prosperity for all of us. So, I'm going to leave it to the experts. Um, a very warm welcome to you. I very much appreciate your time, your expertise, your energy and your commitment. It's great to see you. Enjoy the day.